The President of the Republic of Uganda, Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, is among the African leaders who have been instrumental in pushing for the integration of the African continent. Over time, he has emphasized the economic benefits of African countries trading freely and expanding markets for products produced within the continent. While we always aim at creating a continental common market for the whole of Africa, we also aim at creating a regional political federation where possible. While it is possible and desirable to create a continental common market, a political federation which represents a maximum form of integration should only be for peoples who are either similar or compatible and preferably with a common language. This is how East Africa has always been the best candidate for political integration. Despite these efforts, some African countries remain under hostile operations that hinder achieving unity. To provide perspective on the realities of African integration, we spoke to Godbert Mushabe, a policy analyst and researcher. The integration of Africa has been a, it's, it's, a, it's an unending story. Right from, uh, you can say just from the Abuja Treaty of 1980. I mean, when you look at the Abuja Treaty and you read it, and you, you actually get excited at the way leaders at that time were thinking. Yeah. He notes that the diversity of African countries remains an impediment due to their differing political structures and aspirations, which do not align with the vision of a single unified continent. You have authoritarian regimes. You have dictatorship, outright dictatorships. You have uh, you have countries tending to monarchy like uh, like Equatorial Guinea and others, and then you have emerging democracies. Now it's unlikely that you can you can package these countries into one one entity called integration. Tumushabe suggests that rulers who have overstayed in power should allow for smooth transitions to facilitate integration. Uh, they have made their contribution, which we must celebrate but they are not the ones that are going to deliver us as a continent to where we need to be. Though he disagrees with focusing merely on adopting agreements. It's about having rural leaders that have absolute commitment that, and the will, and they are able to sacrifice some of these small sovereignties that they claim to be able to pursue a bigger, a bigger good. And many African leaders do not have that capacity According to him, African leaders often view integration as a series of meetings to discuss specific principles. Uh, these leaders come, they, you know, they, they come together in summits and uh, they bring on other countries and say, oh, we are integrating. So a, a lot of the integration we see now is more of the geographical space. The role of the common person is to make noise to tell your leaders to stir up. Tell your leaders, your African leaders to stir up. The biggest problem of Africa is me and I. Our leaders, we the leaders, are mainly concerned about flag independence. Excellency, Honorable Minister, we don't know what we are doing. So it's up to you, the people of Africa, especially you, the youth, to whom we are handing over the baton, to ensure that you actualize what, was the, what has been the long dream of our forefathers. He argues that unification should go beyond geographical integration. The limitations or the, the, the constraints to, to, to economic integrations, again, are the borders and the taxes that we impose, the tariffs, the non-tariff barriers. If you are able to break this, if you have the will, the commitment, and the, and the, and the vision, knowing that removing these barriers create prosperity for the greatest number of people then you can be able to move them and you move towards that ideal and remember that most of these barriers are actually imposed by the same governments it is very clear to us that we cannot share poverty and we cannot share hunger but we can share opportunity and we can share prosperity. Furthermore, Tumushabe believes there needs to be a threshold for countries joining any bloc as a strategy to achieve political integration. The, the, the thresholds become incentives for this, contending, this candidate to be able to reform so that we can join the club.
But when you bring cats and dogs and lions and leopards and everything and say, we have integrated, that is a tall order. And I think that's the crisis that we have both at the, at the micro level, like the East African community, but the African Union as well. have to unite. The people of Africa have to unite. And when you unite, you gain strength. You pull together your resources. Pull together these African resources. Then we can uh, see what to do. Which African country can go to the moon now? Whether Africa will ever speak as one continent remains uncertain, as many nations are aligned with different allies serving unique interests. Ivan Kahwa, UBC News.